Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to show you a binder of something I kept from college. Now, I graduated from college in 2005 with a degree in design as it pertains to graphic design. So a lot of the things I kept from college wouldn't work to keep long term. A lot were notes for computer programs, and that just changed too quickly, so it made no sense to keep those around. And a lot of notes were from um, art history, and that doesn't ever change. <laughs> and I can always pick up a book at the local library, so that made no sense to keep around. This was a binder from color theory class that I believe I took in 2003 at the community college before I transferred. And I want to show you what's inside. So this is all done with Liquitex acrylic paint. Each school will recommend something specific. Each teacher, instructor, professor will recommend something specific for what they prefer you use for a color theory class. But this is what we used. And we used a warm blue, a cool blue. Here I'm practicing tints and shades, whites for tints, blacks for shades, and then both for hue changes. There is a raw sienna, a burnt sienna, a warm and cool yellow. Tints and shades and hues. Tints, shades, hues. These are swatch cards. It's really, really easy to use acrylic for swatches because they're so opaque. And we didn't water anything down. We didn't thin them out. It was directly from the tube for ease. Here's a raw umber and a burnt umber. So here is the warm, warm and warm. There is a warm red and a cool red as well. And mixing them together and then using tints and then using shades. So using white paint and using black paint. Again, this was all Liquitex. That's, it's fairly budget. And this wasn't even the heavy body stuff. I think this was the basics. It was pretty, pretty affordable. Here's the alizarin with cadmium. So this is what it looks like with a warm red, a warm yellow. Here's a warm yellow, a cool red. A warm red, a cool yellow. And then you can look side by side. Do I like that shade? Do I like that shade? Do I like that shade? This is why I say swatch your paints. Figure out what each of them do. Get to know them. Constantly mix, create color charts. I hope this inspires you to create something that you can use as a reference for color mixing. Here's the ultramarine with the cool yellow, the haunts of light. Ultramarine, and here's the warm yellow. Cool yellow with the Prussian blue. What, that, what those colors look like when you mix them. This is a reference guide I've kept all these years. I haven't kept hardly anything else. And this is actually on just an acid-free cardstock that goes through the printer, and I'll show you why in a minute. And by minute, I mean a second. So, printing color wheels onto cardstock paper is super, super easy. And then you can paint right over it. Don't water down your acrylic paint. And you'll be able to use this and create this without buckling. So, analogous colors. Colors next to each other on the color wheel. Analogous colors that are in harmony. Here's a, tri a triadic harmony. Another triadic harmony. Here's a first split complementary color. So this is directly complementary, and right next to it is another complementary color you could use. That's why it's called a first split. Here's another first split. This one uses uh, Prussian blue instead. Here's a second split complementary, which means it skips a color. It's what this is on the back of this color wheel with these little arrows. It's for creating split complementaries. And I'll link all these products and things if you want to make your own. Here's another second split. Here's the direct complementary color. Here's a complementary color. Here is what it looks like when companies create advertisements using the colors. So these are complementary, the violet and the yellow. Sort of red and blue. <clears throat> First split complementary color right here. This is probably from a National Geographic. 
Here is a couple. These are analogous colors on the color wheel. And again, this is how they advertise and create certain feelings and emotions and use color to the best of their ability. Oh, there's another one in here. Very similar colors. So here's complementary colors. Here's what they look like with a wash. Here they are stippled. Here they are mixed. And I have a few of these of complementary colors. And here is a recipe for making my own burnt sienna. Prussian plus le lemon yellow makes a green. I add both the reds. Cadmium red medium. Alizarin makes a brown. Add more cadmium yellow medium. And I get burnt sienna. So here's mine. Burst the tube. Fairly close. Here's a recipe for raw sienna. Raw umber. Here's more complementary colors. This is crossed out for some reason. I didn't need that apparently. Complementary colors mixed, stippling, and a wash. Here is stippling with colors and how an underlining color can change the whole mood of the piece. Here's burnt umber recipe. It's both a warm blue, a cool blue, a warm red, and a cool red, a warm yellow, and a cool yellow makes the perfect burnt umber. Here's washes of complementary colors, of things analogous colors. Here is tints. So can you take a cool color? If we know cool colors recede and warm colors come forward, can we take a cool color and make it come forward? If we add white and create a tint, does that work? Does that pop? Does that come forth or does it recede? And that's what I'm looking at with these cool colors. Can I take cool colors and make them come forward? Can I make warm colors recede if I add black? Can I trick my own eye? Warm colors advance, cool colors recede. Okay. Alizarin we know is a cool red. I added white for a tint to bring it forth. This is a really interesting study. So we know that purple and yellow are complementary colors on the color wheel. But if I add a shape that's bigger, does it distract your eye? Is this now the most important thing on the picture instead of this? Knowing that these two were created to pop on purpose. So on some of these, it's a huge distraction. On some of these, this isn't the biggest distraction. The yellow still pops the most. It's where your eye goes first. Where does your eye go? Does it go to the complementary color or is it distracted by something even larger? So when you go to paint a painting and you're using colors that are complementary to get one to pop on purpose, don't then add something really, really huge in a different color because it's going to distract the eye. It's going to move the eye. This pops. Where does your eye go first? Where does it go second? Do you want something competing? They're competing for attention. Right here. Okay, now this is a use of cadmium red and cadmium yellow and I created tints and shades with those two colors together to see if I could create a shape just using those, practicing, can I highlight with those? Can I shade with those colors together? So these are some dark colors I used. This is alizarin, cadmium red, Prussian, lemon yellow. Yeah, I used a lot of colors to try and create a shape where the shade isn't gray and the highlight isn't white. I'm using the own color for highlights and I'm using part of the color for the shade to make it a more realistic three-dimensional shape that pops. So I wrote the alizarin tints are useful, but the shades are so dark they're not useful. These look too similar. So sometimes you create colors that you wouldn't use. Um, I said I wouldn't use these shades, they're ugly. Younger Kendra was ferocious. Okay. I said the cadmium red is very strong and the tints are very warm pinks and the shades resemble an earth tone very successful. The use of value in a given subject. So this is my reference binder that I kept all these years. Now I have a quick little video 
that is a stay wet palette. So anytime acrylic paint dries, it is no longer usable. You cannot re-wet it. It is not watercolor. So for palette, I recommend a piece of scrap plexiglass. This color is called Milk. It is white. Palettes are less distracting when they're white. Um, I used to live by a plexiglass manufacturer and we could get free scrap, but I'm sure there's a place online maybe where the things like this can be located. The benefit of using plexiglass as a palette for acrylic paint is if it dries, it just peels off like a sticker and you can throw it away. The cleanup is in seconds. Highly recommend, especially if you have kids or things, they're constantly pulling you away from your painting. It's a great idea. So I hope this helped. I hope this inspired you. Um, I hope that you're able to see a little bit of the value of learning color mixing and why color mixing can be so beneficial. And if you want to create a similar binder, maybe slow this down, pause it, you're, ask as many questions as you need to in the comment section below. I'll try and help you. Um, yeah, I hope, I hope this helps and I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.